podcast starts now. And even Earnestness Bonanza starts now, one could say. And even one could say Earnestness, the Earnestness Bonanza starts yeah. now. And I want to say Happy Thanksgiving to everyone. Oh, Happy Thanksgiving to all. As everyone is listening to this, I will be preparing Thanksgiving dinner for 12 people with Matthew. Can you believe that? <laughs> I'm actually my I'm having heart palpitations just thinking about it. I mean that sounds insane. So this is coming out what two days before Thanksgiving? Yeah. Perfect. So it's gonna people are gonna be in the thick of the Thanksgiving spirit. We are in studio, I should say. In Los Angeles, California. In studio in Los Angeles, California. We just recorded an episode that will come out after this. And we are coming off of like this really incredible week of shows. And we have to say, for those that don't know what this is potentially, the Ernest Espinanza is not like any other episode mm-hmm. that we would ever do. This is where we uh, drop the bit as completely as we possibly can and uh, try to be sincere and earnest. And is it sometimes boring? 100%. By design, one could say. <laughs> and yet, that's honesty. Yeah. And the, fir- the first few times we did it, I was like, oh, God, I'm being so boring. I'm not saying anything that is in any way entertaining or funny. And then I kind of had an empowering moment where I was like, and that's good. <laughs> <laughs> well, I remember being like, we can't possibly release these. And then we did. And then someone was like, people kept being like, oh, I loved the earnestness one. Yeah, you like, should do that more often. We're like, no, we're like, comedians, yeah, we're, sweetheart. Yeah, like it when we're funny and when we're like <laughs> yeah. trying really hard, not yeah. when we're just like yeah. sort of talking. Yeah, people were like normally you guys try so hard and it keeps falling (laughs) flat at least now you're like you know be normal but i think it's a good time for one one because thanksgiving and two because of this incredible week of shows that george was just about to go into yeah we it really is kind of the perfect time to stop and be grateful for one another (laughs) for everyone who has ever supported the podcast also for everyone we work with now yeah um our producers hans and olivia and our editor adam It's like one of the best, if not the best, like kind of working team relationship I've ever had. Yeah. There's not like a single person where like when I get an email from them, I'm like, oh my God, this again. Yeah. (laughs) And they really understand us and they like us and want us to do our thing. It really feels like um, something you are told does not happen when you are in this cutthroat industry of podcasting and in this town which in is the town of los angeles, los angeles <laughs> yeah <laughs> which is where we are randomly which is where we are do you want to talk about a little bit about the shows i do yeah so we had the most stressful week of our entire lives we were <laughs> <laughs> which actually is kind of sad if you think about it um but we were doing like and this is earnestness it's hard for us <laughs> it's actually hard for me to get in like to like talk i'm like oh no one wants to hear about this but okay we did a show at for New York Comedy Festival at, at the, the Bell, Bell House. House, and that was really fun, and that was on, like, Wednesday of last mm-hmm. week. Then on Friday... Well, then on oh, Thursday... Then on Thursday, we did Game Show. Uh, with Dave Mazzoni, our friend, and normally Matt Rogers, but he wasn't there. But So we were the two, like, queer, uh, wise queers on Game Show, and so that was Thursday night. Then Friday, we flew to L.A. Saturday, we had two shows at Vulture Fest. One was our show which was kind of we did this um very <laughs> silly satirical event that was kind of making fun of the concept of a panel event it was kind of like the first scene of tar so we were pretending to be titans of the podcasting industry and our friend Sudi green past guest was playing the role of like a hard-hitting journalist and asking us all these questions and so we spent all day saturday kind of writing we wrote like all these questions and this whole controversy section where we had to address all these fake controversies and Sudi like really committed to the character. It was like, it really felt like something completely different than anything we've ever done. It also, we didn't see, we didn't like do it thinking like we're going to do something really like subversive. We were kind of like, Oh, this is like a comedy. Like there's going to be comedy on this festival. And this is what we think would be funny to do. Like if it's our fans, they'll understand it's funny that we're like pretending to be really self-important. And then it was like, oh, it's like there is comedy at the festival, but it's mostly genuine Q&As. Yeah, and it's like pop culture fandom It's a pop culture festival. Yeah. And so then (laughs) it looked like it's turned us into like actually doing the edgiest thing. (laughs) Yeah. I was like, oh, we are suddenly Andy Kaufman. We are like. (laughs) It was really fun. I was worried almost that we were like offending the organizers, which was not like because there weren't. I guess we also maybe thought there would be more comedy events. Totally. There were like two or three comedy events, but it really was like mostly 
um, you know, panels and cast reunions and, uh, you know, like uh, like live podcast recordings and whatever. And it did feel like we were kind of the jokers. Of, <laughs> like we were like doing jester. We were being jesters, basically. We were the we were, court jesters. We were being court jesters. Because also it's like it was at a festival. So you have to assume there are some people that are don't know who we are and are just coming oh, to something that says 100% Q&A about podcasting. Yeah, because yeah, the title of the event was Vulture Presents, Stradio Lab Presents, What is Podcasting? A Conversation. <laughs> and truly multiple people were like, uh, is this serious? Like, should I come to, th- is this like a show or is it serious? And um, to that I say, darling, <laughs> use use your brain. <laughs> <laughs> but it was so fun. I've actually never felt, I haven't felt uh, like that, um, both like nervous and excited on stage yeah. in a long time where it, it was like, yeah. oh my God, we are like being, we're being the Joker. We're it being was, so, yeah. we're being like little stinkers. It was electric. I was so, obviously I'm always grateful for you every second of every day, but Sudi in that moment, I was like, I feel so safe in her hands. Mm-hmm. She was so fully committing to the bit. And then we had Matt Rogers, who was there for his own show. We asked him if he would want to do like a cameo, basically. And when we opened up for Q- audience Q&A, the joke was that we kept calling on him. And of course, people were so excited um, that it was him. And he could have done anything, but he came fully prepared with a character and a narrative and <laughs> three questions that each had like their own introduction. The he had multiple beats that each heightened, and I was like, <laughs> okay, was you like, know, you don't have to be like funnier than yeah, us right yeah. now. <laughs> I yeah. So that was the that was our little event that we did. It was in the like, kind of like smaller stage pool side mm-hmm. um, at the festival, and then. Right after that, uh, like an hour later, we did Matt's show, which was this big kind of Thanksgiving or oh God, Christmas variety show. Yeah. Turns out everyone's really good at singing except for us. Yeah. But, but we had so much fun and it was just like we got to be like the little stinker sidekicks. Yeah. It and was, I was like, like this is heaven. Like the premise was that he's in his living room for Christmas and his friends keep coming over and doing stuff with him. It was kind of like it, it felt very like classic variety show. And we were the only ones who didn't sing. And so our, I guess he just kind of had a conversation with us, and then we just like were on stage while all these, <laughs> like true singers, were like singing, and we were just kind of reacting to it. It was a damn blast. It was so fun. Truly felt insane after that. Yeah. And then by the way, like that that night was also just like one of the best. <laughs> it's really like one of the best nights socially of the past three years for me. Like yeah, I it have to felt agree. like a sort of pre-pandemic joy that I, I hadn't felt in so long. We all got dinner afterwards, everyone from that show, and then uh, our Mo, Fry, Pasek, and us went back to our hotel for a nightcap, and we're just like laugh, laugh, laughing all night. So fun. We were literally like walking, because our hotel <laughs> was on the like walk of stars or whatever, and it was, we started out by being like, who would, like, who cares about this? And then immediately just started seeing names of celebrities that we recognize, and we go, ah! Literally every name we recognize, which is many of them, they're all famous. We would just be like, "Oh my God, Pink! Oh my God, Nicole Kidman! Oh my God, Anne Hathaway!" And I, ju- I still have photos of my on my phone where it's like, "Why did I take a photo of Pink Star? When am I like, when am I gonna need that?" But I was in that moment, I was like, "Well, I have to have a photo of Pink Star." It was so fun. We were being crazy, and I was having a blast. It felt like summer camp, and uh, yeah, and then and so then the next uh, the next day was our one day off. We, again, like had such a nice, like I saw Julia Claire during the day, then we saw Josh and Aaron at night. I had dinner with Charles Rogers. Um, And so that was like our one friend day. And then uh, Monday was our show at the Elysian, which which was genuinely like I felt like I was on drugs. Just a cherry on top. Uh, Everyone, the audience was like one of the best audiences we've, we've ever had. I was like, I've never felt so supportive by a room full of people. Um, it was. It felt really friends and family. We had Sydney, Greta, Mo, and Nori. So all people that we like really love and do not have to like feel like we're doing work with. Yeah. Us after that show versus us on Tuesday uh, the f- previous week when we were so deeply stressed out and like still even trying to book people and still trying to like put it all together and figure out what we were doing. It was just like, what a sense of relief. And it was like, it was very emotional. Yeah, it was, it really (laughs) felt like a weight had been lifted. Because, yeah, I mean, we basically did one, two, three, four, five. We basically did five shows in five days. Yeah. 
in two in two cities. No, I understand other people have harder lives than us, <laughs> but <laughs> but it was it for us. It did feel, you know it it did feel like a lot it and a lot a of lot. pressure. I mean the you know you just never know how these things are gonna go. I mean, I absolutely have PTSD from doing bad like planning yeah. shows and having them flop 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 yeah, in LA. You, you really you really never know. And I and we've both had experiences of like shows we thought were going to do well that like sold no tickets that did sell tickets but did but were terrible <laughs> where like you thought a bit would crush and it just didn't and anyway it just it was uh, it was kind of one of those weeks where everything seemed to be going right and everyone around us was like doing their best to help out and be supportive and uh, yeah and I guess yeah so that leads us to the earnestness bonanza which yeah I think we're I guess I even want to say like thanks for coming. Yeah, like anyone who came to a show or I don't know, <laughs> or, or has come to a show in the past. And I even want to say like thanks for listening. Yeah, why not? Like, I think this week in particular really put a, like a different perspective on it. You know, we've seen it the podcast grow and it's been very nice to see, but this like doing like all these shows and feeling like like it's hard for me sometimes to like understand that what we're doing is <laughs> like it almost transcends us as individuals in a I, I maybe that's too aggrandizing but it's like it is it is something it is something and i like to be like yeah it's our stupid podcast that i don't care about or whatever well it is our stupid podcast but it's also like fun to be like i don't know if we're like stupid and silly and um uh you know whimsical or whatever else it's like fun to then be in a room of all people that are like in the mood to be silly and stupid yeah and I don't I mean we're not under any uh, impression that we're doing like deep important cultural work no but it's also like just like super fun to it's basically just um I think mostly it's just like fun to meet people that share our sensibility and that have a similar similar sense of humor and to be like you guys seem really cool yeah And so, I don't know. Yeah, last night we were, like, talking to people after the show, and it was just, like, so nice to meet people. And I thought every single person I talked to was, like, genuinely someone that's cool and that I would, like, be friends with um, if we we lived in Los Angeles, of course. (laughs) Which, don't ask us. So, Um, yeah. So, grateful. So, uh, to kick it off, George. Uh (laughs) Uh-oh. It's been an amazing time podcasting with you. As we've gone into our corporate era, I'm so happy that we have not changed an ounce and we are still raw and edgy. And, um, you know, these, especially an event like that Vulture thing where we're doing something kind of experimental, I feel so taken care of performing with you. I, because when it's just myself, I'm sort of like, I can get even, I can get very, very nervous because I, by myself, ooh, baby. Yeah. The highs are high, but the lows are low. <laughs> and there are times when I can flop, but with, with the two of us, I always feel, you know, honestly, I'm like, and this is knock on wood, we're absolutely going to bomb as soon as I say this, but I'm like, there's no way we can bomb. No, we'll find something. do not. I'm knocking, <laughs> I'm knocking on the table. We're just like, you know what? We'll f- not that there's no way we can bomb. And I take that back. But I was like, you know, we'll find something. And I could kind of trust that we could find something. Yes. Even if like the things that we intended to go right, well, right, weren't right. going to go well. Yes. And I would like to ping pong that pickleball that back to you (laughs) and say that at this point, like, you know, we had this like, I I don't want to go into the whole thing where in the beginning of the podcast, the joke was that we were coworkers, but then we actually became super close friends and uh, whatever everyone knows. And like at this point, we have been legitimately close friends for many years. (laughs) It's not (laughs) worth addressing. But there's a way where I feel like there's always even one level deeper. Mm -hmm. And what makes me so grateful and excited about our friendship is that I never know what that next level will be and it like I feel like our relationship is deepening every day and like you still surprise me with certain things you say or certain things you do it feels like kind of in the same way with like a a sibling you're very close to where like even though you know them inside and out there's always something to talk about and there's Mm -hmm. always something to do and when we're like sitting next to each other in a show sometimes I will like (laughs) <laughs> sometimes I will like physically just touch your shoulder and it almost feels like I'm like it's like physically grounding <laughs> <laughs> wow so that's our little earnestness up top earnestness up top and wow. now guess what we're gonna do answer your damn questions and now we're gonna answer your damn questions 
As soon as Sam gets his laptop working. I know. I'm not a great tech head. Um, okay. Let's start at the start. Let's do it. Okay. This is from Elena. Sam, can you tell us more about Gizmo? How long have you had him? What kind of dog is he? What is his general affect? Does he bark? Etc. And now, most importantly, can you explain your ethos as a dog owner? Are you a dog owner who lets your dog get away with a lot? Do you get offended if people don't love your dog? Do you take him everywhere? Do you have strict boundaries? I have a theory that someone's approach to their dog says a lot about them, and I'm very curious about yours. I love this question. So this is part one. Part two is for you, but I'll do oh, my part okay, first. Great. So Gizmo, he is a, a rescue. He is a blue healer mixed with something I'm not sure of. He is cranky. He has some aggression issues, if I'm being completely honest. Um, I can concur. <laughs> Although, actually, I, because I've been told that so much, I don't attempt to pet him, so I've never had issues with him. But I do sometimes wish I could like take his little face in my hands. I know it's the it's the preparedness paradox. Yeah. But I do like he just he's complicated because he he almost like doesn't like affection. Like, but then as soon as he, someone's ignoring him, he's like, well, I want a little. Mm -hmm. But I think the real key is to like pet him a little and then like stop and then he'll like walk away. But I'm like. He's tough. He's like a stubborn dog. <laughs> so I try to just like work with him rather than against him. Like uh, is sort of my approach. Like there was a while like we have found out like, OK, he doesn't like when people get in his face. Like that is a fact. So now we just tell everyone that comes in, like, don't get in his face and generally ignore him unless he like approaches you. Yeah, I tried a lot of different methods. Like I tried like because he has leash aggression. And so I tried to like do the like sit and treat at every time we would pass another dog. And then, like, that <laughs> really did not work. <laughs> and then, like, I tried, yeah, I tried, like, being, like, stopping every time, like, and, like, get being really strict. And that, like, didn't, that actually did work better. Honestly, the thing that worked the most was changing where I put his collar, like, his leash, putting it, like, higher up on his neck. Because um, that was, like, more uncomfortable for him. And so he was like, okay, now I don't want to mess around on this. But generally, I try to. I think um, I am the strict parent, and Misha is the nice parent. Misha's always like giving him extra treats and stuff, and I'm always like, "Well, he already ate dinner." <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, I love my dog very much, and we have a very, very special bond. And um, how long have you had him? I have had him for eleven years. That's crazy. Yeah, that is crazy. You're not a dog owner that brings him to like bars and stuff. No, just because he's like, he needs his space. Yeah. I like to bring him, like, if we're going to a park to mm -hmm. sit somewhere, I'll bring him there. Uh, I like to bring him on quote unquote vacations. Like, if we're going to my parents' house or Misha's sure. parents' house, I love to get him out of the city whenever I can. Yeah. Because I think it calms him. Definitely. All right. Yep. Yeah. And now yours. Okay. So this is mine. Um, all right. George, you've said in past episodes that you've changed your name because it's almost impossible to pronounce in English, so obviously I'm extremely curious about what your name is. Can you introduce yourself using your full name like you would in Greece? On a similar note, <laughs> on the first Earnestness Bonanza, a listener requested 30 seconds of Sam giggling. I wonder how many people have sexually pleasured themselves to those 30 seconds of Sam giggling. Thousands, <laughs> hopefully. Can I request 30 seconds of you speaking Greek? Uh, you know, we did, I, I gotta say, we said this episode would be self-indulgent. So if you find yourself being like, this is self-indulgent, know that it's by design. Yeah, that's the point. That's the point. Um, <laughs> yes, I'm happy to say what my full name is. So in Greek, my name would be Yorgos Tsiviriotis. And basically I shortened, like, I didn't want to just like change my name to like George Smith. Like I wanted it to have like a Greek vibe. And so in fact, so my name normally would start with a TS, but that's actually that actually was because of a regional accent kind of. Um, and so when I change it to a C, that's almost kind of hearkening back to like the original name that it would be because my family, my dad's family was from a village or from a town called Kiveri with a like with a C sound in the beginning. So it would have been Kiveriotis. And so I made it Kiveri, like Severis. And so it's in my mind, it's like part of etymologically, it has roots in the actual name. So I didn't want to just like make it something random. Um, did your sisters? No, no, no. I mean, it's and I wouldn't have. Um, the only reason I did it is because I was like doing stand up, and I just like wanted people to be able to pronounce it when bringing me on stage. Like, sure. If I wasn't, even if I was just a, a writer, I would not have changed it. Like, it's not, you know. It. I will say it is. It is annoying to have a name that no one can pronounce. Like when we lived in New Jersey, it was just so 
exhausting that like I would have like my middle school graduation and the and the teacher would ask me like three times ahead of time like how do I say this and then on the day of the thing she'd be like George T and then everyone would like laugh knowingly Mm -hmm, (laughs) mm -hmm. it's just like annoying Um, but then again right now it's annoying because my legal name is different than the name everyone knows me by and so it's impossible to like you know (laughs) just like I'll have like a dinner reservation someone will show up early and it's like with my old email address so they'll be like it's for Severus and they're like we don't have it and they'll like text you know it's Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. a whole thing also I say Severus, even though it's a fake name, that's how I pronounce it. And of course, most people now say Severus. And I'm like, well, I couldn't even escape. Still, people can't pronounce my fake name. Um, Okay, and then 30 seconds. Sure, I can speak Greek for 30 seconds. Would you like to time me? Yeah, ready, set, go. Melena, Giorgo, I'm from Athena. Έχω δύο αδελφέ, μια τη λένε Λιβία, μια τη λένε Χριστίνα. Τώρα μένω στη Νέα Υόρκη, αλλά πηγαίνω σπίτι κάθε καλοκαίρι και για τα Χριστούγεννα. Τώρα σε λίγο θα έρθει η μαμά μου να μείνει μαζί μα. Στη Νέα Υόρκη Και γενικά περνάω πολύ ωραία Έχω έναν φίλο εδώ πέρα τον Σέαμ Έχουμε μαζί, δουλεύουμε μαζί Όλη μέρα και σε λίγο Θα πάω να φάω βραδινό Is that three more seconds <laughs> Oh, yeah, you're done <laughs> That means goodbye <laughs> Alright, there we go Wow, um, that was right. powerful I mean, I definitely think thousands of people will pleasure themselves to that Let's fucking hope so <laughs> Next question Next question Okay, this is from Liz. They asked three questions, but we're going to do the third question, which I think is funny. <laughs> what is the most morally corrupt sponsor you would allow and what for what price? Wait, okay. Before we answer this, I want to say, because we do get messages all the time about ads. I, I want to just say, like, I think that often the ads are, like, algorithmically chosen and or personalized or, like... We're not signing off on every <laughs> ad, and, and like we're ki- we're really like learning as we go. We're also learning. It's very funny because I understand why it would be of course, off-putting. Of course, and I'm also like, as a the person in it, I'm like, wait, why don't they know that we have no say? Or like, I know. I, I'm kind of like, well, yeah. When I listen to the radio, I don't necessarily think. But but of course, I understand. I, I understand that. Um, I don't know. I'm not kind of like I'm not like shut up. Like I understand no, no. where it's coming from. Um but it it really is like we listen to the podcast like two times before it's released for edits and obviously the ads are not on those edits. So to be honest, we don't listen to it when it has ads cuz we're not going <laughs> to listen to it a third time just like on our little walks. Yeah. So it it's always very surprising and sh- shocking in like a bad way when suddenly we'll get like an angry message about an ad. <laughs> Yeah, it's actually very weird, um, but I understand where it comes from. Yes, of course. But just the next time it happens, go, damn, the algorithm sure is weird. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> if it's our voices, that's different. Yeah. We are, they're not using a, a, yes. a bot to create our voices. It's also Yeah, we're also kind of in the beginning of this process where, like, I'm sure in a year, like, more of the ads will be, like, us f- endorsing things or whatever, like you, like you hear in other podcasts. But, like, right now, since we're still new, it's mostly, like, just ads that exist in the whole network Mm -hmm. so yeah i mean i do think we'll be more careful when it's like us doing something you have to hope you gotta hope (laughs) but i would love to plug the military yeah yeah um no okay what is the most morally corrupt sponsor and maybe let's say morally corrupt sponsor that we would do the voiceover for oh sure 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 um let's see morally corrupt you know, a real one, this is maybe too grounded of an answer. This seems like it could be a fun, there could be a funny answer here, but that's not what this one is. Yeah. Is like, I feel confused about like Amazon shows where oh, it's like, because sure. it's like, you want to be like hard line and be like, no, I'm not going to support, like, I would never do like a buy from Amazon. But then it's like, okay, well, I do understand, like the Amazon entertainment connection know, is always really confusing. Right. Also because like all media conglomerates are incredibly bad <laughs> like, <laughs> but nothing but respect to but our... nothing but respect to all of them <laughs> um yes i i i understand that dilemma i mean it's like i mean there are disney shows and then there's also like the, well you know what I, I don't know and then it's also like i i i have genuinely no idea what the labor conditions are in many of these places i the yeah. best thing we can do is go case by case i would say my kind of jokey answer is like i would never <laughs> I don't know how I would confirm this, but there are so many things that are like supplements or vitamins. And I'm like, if I could confirm that they are fully placebos, like they do nothing, I would never advertise something that is harmful for you. But if someone could confirm (laughs) that something is a complete placebo, I would like lie that it works and just know that our listeners are smart enough to not believe me. (laughs) 
<laughs> that is such a funny answer. I wish I had a jokey answer. No, I don't have one. All right, next question. Next question. Okay, this is from Maxim. Do either of you find it difficult to relate to Gen Z gay men? I myself am Gen Z, parentheses, 23, and I found it increasingly difficult to find things in common with gay millennials and Gen X men. I'm surprised to find that although we're both gay, the expected generation divide does seem to apply, mostly culturally and in terms of humor. Hmm. And then wait, the generation gap applies culturally and, and, and through humor. Mostly culturally and in terms of humor. Okay. And there's also a part two. Should I do that now or later? What is it? Uh, when you both were in your early twenties, what was y'all's relationship with aging, specifically through the lens of being a gay man? Sure, we can. Yeah, we can do both. Okay. So, how do you feel about relating to Gen Z gay men? Um, I don't feel there's that much of a. I mean, you know, from my experience, when I've. I don't know that many 23 year olds. I think that's what it comes down to. Yeah. I was trying to think like who are friends of mine that are 23. I mean, <laughs> I'm sure we interact with 23 year olds on a daily basis, but we are in our 30s. So like our close friends are just not 23. And and thank God. <laughs> I mean, how weird would it be if we were like, well, yeah. Jeffrey's kind of like this. But <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but no, I mean, I, I did famously, as we talked about once, I got drinks with a 23 year old oh, yes. who like is in New York and went to my college and is like doing comedy and so we were uh, you know talking about that and it was like I felt like culturally and I couldn't tell if he was like appeasing me <laughs> or if it was like at least like you know the, he had the same cultural touchstones yes they come at a different time and a different like uh, have different meaning like in ways that can be jarring mm -hmm. where it was like we're talking about like Gaga and he'd sure. be like yeah I mean I remember listening to Bad Romance on my way to middle school and it's like right 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 that came out when I was in college and that's like that really like hits you like a ton of bricks of the difference in age totally. but like generally it was like we we pretty much have the same language uh, but I don't know what's your experience yeah I mean I, my uh, my youngest sister is <laughs> was born in 2000 Whoa. which is so crazy to think about and I'm very close with her and I like you know there are differences between us but like we pretty much speak the same language I, well, the one kind of thing I would say about all this is that because you and I are very like spend a lot of time on the internet I actually think we pro we probably relate much more to a 23 year old than the average person in their 30s sure that's I, a good point I think like there's a sort of I mean, of course, there was a sort of like delayed adolescence that happens with doing comedy when we're like running around even <laughs> even like in our 30s, like running around doing like shows in bars and getting tequila sodas with drink tickets like the average person. I mean, there are people the average person our age is like having children, you know, so mm -hmm, I do mm -hmm. think like there is less of a generation gap than there would be if I was like an executive at Shell. <laughs> 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 so, yeah, I definitely don't feel like. I also it's so funny like the way these generation gaps are like talked about I always thought it was kind of a joke when people were like Gen Z sucks millennials suck and then you realize people actually have strong feelings about it and you're like grow up yeah like literally this is so meaningless like <laughs> yes everyone is everyone has different cultural touchstones and everyone grows up and everyone inevitably like becomes more quote unquote mature or often becomes honestly more conservative in some ways or their priorities change and you kind of like have to like extend some grace to people for being like different ages and different and coming from different life experiences. Yeah. And like the idea, like, yeah, this whole like idea that there's a feud between millennials and Gen Z is like truly grow up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, it is a funny thing. Cause like as millennials, like what were my feelings towards Gen X? Like I felt nothing towards them. Yeah. Like it was like, it was not something I thought of. I mean, I do think 10 years above us, would 10 years above us be Gen X? Yeah. I guess so. Well, it's funny because my boyfriend is like seven, seven and a half years older than me. And a lot of his friends are obviously older than him. So it is very, like I have many friends now, especially through him that are like, like that are like up to 15 years older than me and have like children that are like in middle school. And I think like me interacting with people older than me keeps into perspective my own differences with, with people younger than me. I fully agree. Like I, I have older friends and it's like you learn to like <laughs> it's like 
you still get along and understand the same things and like maybe have different yeah. perspectives on it slightly but like like the people that I know that are like Gen X I'm mm -hmm. I'm not like like I do think we see the world a little bit differently but not in a way that's like you're wrong I'm no. right it's like uh, yeah. oh and I actually appreciate a Gen X perspective totally like it, it there is a different outlook yeah. in a way that I'm like there's something to it yeah that's true <laughs> Right. Um, okay, and then part two, which I actually do like, was when you both were in your early 20s, what was y'all's relationship with aging, specifically through the lens of being a gay man, and how has it changed? I mean, it's so funny because the thing is when you're in your early 20s, you don't think about anyone other than yourself. I didn't have a relationship with age. I was not thinking in my early 20s, God, I like am afraid of aging or that I can't wait to age. I was just like, I'm depressed and <laughs> hate myself. <laughs> I I was kind of obsessed with age. I really like... HBO's girls was like obsessed with being <laughs> sure, like sure, in my sure. 20s yeah. and I was just like this is the exact age I am meant to be but so honestly my late late 20s and like turning 30 sorry to sound like the most boring person on earth was kind of jarring for a moment but in a way where now I'm like oh that was childish to feel that yeah. way like now I'm like glad I don't feel that way yeah I kind of uh, love getting older yeah, it's kind of fun. I mean, whatever. Check back in in however many years. Maybe we'll be like <laughs> full of cheek fillers and, <laughs> you know, uh, be afraid of aging. But right now it's going fine. Yeah, my cheek filler looks great. Yeah, look I better. think you look really good. Thank I mean, you. Yeah, yeah, You yeah. can't blink, but. <laughs> yeah, because my cheeks are so full. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, All right. Okay, next question. Okay, this is from Patrick. <laughs> I love this. I'm a longtime listener, and I love that you've created a safe space for little monsters and kindness punks. Mm. I've loved Gaga for as long as I can remember, but in the spirit of earnestness, I sometimes get conflicted about her motives and whether or not she is being sincere with her fans. <laughs> when I listen to her music, watch her live performances, and take in her fashion moments, I think she's a once-in-a-generation genius. But when I watch her promote Oreos from her couch and say random shit about kindness during the Chromatica Ball, I get pessimistic and worry that her whole shtick is totally hollow and that she's just a rich lady pulling one over on us. Do either of you have doubts slash qualms like this about Mother Monster? Is she sincere and ultimately just basic? Should we care about her motives if we love her music? I would love to know your thoughts. This is such a well, complicated I, you gotta, topic. You gotta go first. I mean, that's the whole thing with her. Like, yeah. it's like the push and pull where you're like, you can't trust her. And that's what, like, you... It's literally like, I think of her as, like, a force. She is <laughs> obviously a force. Yeah. But you, you crave that force to go towards the light, but the darkness is always calling her. And it is, like, so hard to know which way she's going to go yeah. and if her compass is right. Totally. I think she has good intentions, but I also think she has bad intentions. It's genuinely very hard to read her. Um, I saw a tweet recently that was, like, so when Katy Perry voted for um, – oh, my gosh. Why am I blinking? Who Caruso. Oh, Caruso, thank you, who ran against Karen Bass. Um, when Katy Perry voted for Caruso uh, – my kind of internet friend Nolan quote tweeted and was like, thank God Stephanie doesn't know what year it is. <laughs> and that to me like really encapsulates. It's like, yeah, she doesn't know what year it is. So you have to kind of go into everything with that mindset that she's like, essentially like since the, since she was like 18 years old, she has been pretending she is like a 70 year old kook. Yeah. Yeah. And so just like, and, 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 and in terms of like Oreo, chromatica oreos and like her skincare line and stuff it's like unfortunately this is the world we live in i mean say that it also okay i know what it is for me you know those balls like a metal ball that you drop down like a thing and you're <laughs> almost like a betting thing or and you like see which one it lands on yeah like gaga is that always where it's like oh please go no 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 oh, <laughs> yeah. oh, oh, oh yeah. she's coming back she's coming back yeah. no 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 no, no. Yeah, it's true <laughs> i mean yeah she's just like yeah, I just I, I no part of me is ever going to take her literally or like interrogate her intentions in an earnest way. And maybe that's a cop out, but I'm like she's a cartoon character. She's a cartoon character. And what's funny is when she is like pretending to be super or maybe not even pretending. I believe that she is super earnest. Like, oh, 100%. I mean, she again, this is not original to say, but she is like a full like she's like a theater kid at heart. Yeah. And even when she does her like little sponsored stuff, like there is a part of even that that feels earnest where she's like I am feeding everyone Oreos. <laughs> <laughs> it's also just like, I, I, yeah, we aren't Gen X <laughs> and like we aren't fully anti uh, corporate in a funny way where it's like, 
I mean, people are going to work with corporations. At least it's going to be Gaga making silly Oreos. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> I know. It's tough. I mean, I do go through phases where sometimes the weight of all of it hits me and I'm like, the world is so deeply broken. Do you know what I mean? Like, sure, sure, sure. I, and, it, and it feels almost too much to bear. <laughs> but yes, yeah. you have to kind of go through the world with a bit of horse blinders on at times. Um, it's only like she's, I, I don't know. And maybe I do um, make too many justifications for yeah. her, but I'm like, She's not the Obamas. No, no, She's no. not like... Well, that's what I've always said. Like, it, it keeps kind of... Sh- I don't know. To be honest, it shocks me on a daily basis how seriously people take celebrities. And I say this as not as someone who thinks they're better. Like, I love pop culture or whatever. But, like, you do just have to, like, be like, none of this matters. Like, what matters is, like, actual, you know, social I- and po- economic and political issues. <laughs> like, whether <laughs> Lady Gaga is, like, <laughs> earnest in her intentions is not, like... The be all end all. Yeah. For um, the record, we want Lady Gaga to be taxed. Yes, that's right. Yes, we do want Lady Gaga to be taxed. It's always when Katy Perry voted for Crusoe. There were it was funny when so many people were like, "So this is what y'all's faves like." So yeah, just remember next time when when you think you're relating to someone that they're actually rich. And it's like yeah, like who who are you addressing? Who thought Katy Perry was like relatable and had like socialist politics? What no. are you talking? What are you talking about? about? She is one of the yeah. most. The dumbest ones we have. She's literally one of the dumbest people who has ever lived. <laughs> My final, I just want to say one final thing about Lady Gaga. I grew up, for better or worse, as like a huge Madonna fan. And Madonna, talk about someone who disappoints you like every day with everything. She, it's like when you have cut your teeth as a Madonna fan, <laughs> nothing, nothing can like make you feel bad like Lady Gaga having chromatic Oreos please have you seen what Madonna was doing for all of the 90s I mean literally I was a Kanye fan and it's just like yeah yeah, I'll take an Oreo please thank you exactly this is from Joelle do you consider yourselves artists and if so what motivates you to keep making your art or doing your work if you don't think of yourself as an artist so wow what do you think we were kind of like, is there any way to answer this without sounding insufferable? And we we're like, yeah, we'll try. And now I'm like, wait, no, there isn't. <laughs> There's no way to answer this without sounding insufferable. Uh, to actually, I will. my earnest answer is I do not think about that. I, I would have to agree. Like it is not something that is important. Like that distinction is not something that's important Ooh, to me. I actually like that answer a lot. Thank I, you. Because I fully agree. Yeah, that's how I feel about it. Yeah. I, literally never in my life have I been tortured about whether or not I'm an artist. I think the moment I think of my whatever I'm doing as like important, I am now then unable to do it. I yeah. have to think of what I'm doing as stupid and yes. irrelevant or I will never do it. Yeah. <laughs> and thank God it is. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Next, Next question. Okay, so this is funny. This is from Austin. Hi Sam and George. I never thought it could happen to me. I was at the pavement show in early October with my best friend, Princey Straight Woman. She saw Sam from like three feet away, yelled, Celebrity sighting, and then waved at him until he waved back. <laughs> a few weeks later, I was at Top Dog Underdog with my straight guy friend. Wow. I saw George from a distance, but my friend, whose glasses prescription is six years old, couldn't see him. And so he took a very zoomed in picture attached. After completing the Stradio Lab Pokédex, <laughs> I have a few questions. Did you guys like the show? Mm. Are concerts for girls and plays for boys? Is that why the combination of concerts and plays, musical theater, is gay? Is that why I was at both? When you are recognized in public, do you prefer it to happen pavement style, demands your attention from close quarters, or top dog underdog style, creepy surveillance (laughs) you didn't know happened until a month after the fact, if ever? Um, And they attached actually a really amazing photo of George in the theater that he doesn't know is being taken of him, which is funny. Wow. Yeah. I love the I think I look great. You look great. So did we like the show? Did you like pavement? I did. I had a good time at the show. I had a lot of fun hanging out with Claire O'Kane and watching the band there was a i will say it there was a hint of sadness yeah in the like nostalgia s- element kind nostalgia of. element and sort of feeling everyone being older and almost feeling like what are we doing <laughs> like sort <laughs> yeah. of like what is this like is this is this good yeah. like they don't did they they don't really like they were having fun but it's like it's not like they're like making new music sure. like they're doing this to please the fans and like put on a big fun show Mm -hmm. and it was sort of like there was an element of it that half bummed me out even though i was enjoying and they have meant a lot to me before yeah um so it was kind of weird they're one of my big cultural blind spots Mm -hmm. i like have never gone through pavement phase i think matthew really liked pavement when he was younger 
and we have like a couple of the records at home but i've i've i don't even know if i've ever if i could name a pavement song it's just like one of those bands that i never got into i will say it was fun i do think it made me realize how far i have strayed from indie rock as a genre totally and i was like this is kind of fun i forgot how like bitchy uh yeah like a stephen malkmus can be where it's just like like annoyed at the audience mm-hmm. and i'm like oh because i am so used to people being like how's it going totally let's make some noise yeah and it was like oh this guy is being a bitch to me <laughs> and, and and thank god i needed yeah. that yeah um okay i went to top dog underdog the play um the susan Laurie parks play on broadway i i did really like it yeah i really liked it i felt like so it ends with this like really emotional monologue and i do f- I'm sorry to say, but everyone I've talked to agrees with this. Yaya, yeah, who's the actor that... Do you remember the actor... Did you ever watch Ma- Watchmen on HBO? Yes. It's the the guy that's Regina King's husband. Oh. Who plays the blue guy. Mm-hmm. So he's, he had the final monologue. I did feel like he didn't quite stick the landing with the monologue, which is... <laughs> it's like, who am I to, to judge? <laughs> he's an incredible actor. But there was something... It just took me out of it a little bit. Like it, sure. it was not fully there, and ev- and I've everyone I talked to kind of agrees. But the rest of it I thought was really good, and yeah, I mean I've really been kind of like ever since theater reopened, I've been really prioritizing trying to see plays because I think the pandemic made me realize I don't know how how much I took it for granted that they existed before, and I didn't make an effort to see them. So I've. And that's been like one of the ones I've been like most excited to see. Yeah, I mean, I wish I had something better to say. I with theater, I'm always like, I really enjoy it, but I have no education in it and could not don't even know like the right terms uh, when talking about theater or <laughs> acting or anything. I just am kind of like, well, sometimes I like it, sometimes I don't. Um, I think we should cut to the Great. when you are recognized in public. Do you prefer it to happen up close or? <laughs> surveillance yeah. style. I mean, once away. again, not to be self-aggrandizing, we're, it's not like we're being recognized left and right. No. But so it's rare enough that it actually is very fun when Ooh. someone comes up. It's because it's very rare and it's never like annoying. No, we still very much enjoy it. We are actually, if you can believe it, not famous. <laughs> <laughs> we in fact have a gay podcast, um, which is amazing. Uh, okay, next one. But we'll let you know when it gets. And annoying. by the way, the best is at a gay bar. Like, yeah, it's just so fun and. We're all we're all family. We're all family, girl. All right. Okay, this is from Benjamin. As I write, Twitter appears to be on the verge of collapse due to machinations of capital. Mm. As its users crowd around its deathbed, do you have any favorite tweets slash accounts that you will cherish the memory of? Totally okay if not. Thank you. I can. I actually know what my favorite tweet is. Please. Um. Okay. Ah, oh, fuck. Let me. I mean, I wish I remembered the tweeter's name, but I actually think I can find it. Here's the thing. I will, I'm going to say the tweet, and if you search this, you will find who tweeted it. And I'm really sorry I'm not crediting. Um, her na- I, I, I think her name starts with an L, and, 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 and I follow her. It is from, like, the kind of golden era of Twitter where, like, everyone's being so stupid. But the tweet is, so what if vaccines make your kid artistic? That doesn't always mean he's gay. <laughs> It's like one of those things that so toes the line of almost being incredibly offensive, but it is ultimately like literally like wordplay. Yeah. (laughs) Like it feels dangerous without actually at all like making any kind of statement. And it's just it it's so funny to me. Wow. I love that. Oh, can I say the other one? Yeah. So Patricia Lockwood once tweeted (laughs) like I I wish I remember the wording of it, but it was at Paris Review, like the, the Paris Review's account, it was like at Paris Review. So what do you give Paris, or like, or like, so so what's the so so like where did we land on Paris, or some something along those lines? It was much better worded, uh-huh. but like it was one of those things that now seems almost like okay expected, but at the time it was like this is genius. <laughs> Probably like tw- two thousand nine or something. Like I know I'm trying to think of like old old tweets. I don't know. I can't think of a, a true fine. one, but whatever. I love the thought. Okay. This is from Angelina. Now, Jolie. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's from Angelina Jolie. Wow. That's huge. Now that you're a corporate di- darlings oh with big money advertisers, who would your ideal sponsors be if you had to choose them? Oh. What is the Studio Lab brand? Um, well, this is fun because we were at some point asked to give a list of brands we would want to work with, and we were so stumped. It was like, I've never been asked such a toxic question in my yeah. whole life. Because it was like, <laughs> no offense, Olivia, who's the other <laughs> Um 
<laughs> I I understand that that is an, a a normal part of, of having course. this podcast, and of course, it would be much better to do ads for things that we yes. enjoy. But I was truly really like, wait, what does that mean? Like, I know there, like, there's a part of me that there's a part of me that almost likes a separation of church and state of like yes. not knowing what our ads are because I'm yeah. like, well, I'm a radio personality, and <laughs> I it, you know it's not up to me what the ads are. Yeah, the ads aren't about me. Yeah. But basically, we can say a, f- a few that we put in that. List. Well, we were sort of inspired by the Poog approach, and we were sort of like, "Well, how can we just get like free things that we like?" Oh, sure, sure, sure. Or at least because I remember being like, "Can we do an ad for like Equinox?" Like, I want to go to a fancy gym. <laughs> you also, we said like we kept saying, um, like clothing brand, like like Lands End, LL Bean, Patagonia. <laughs> like we were like, we want outerwear and like fun, cozy pajamas. <laughs> um, mine was, which I think I've talked about, Matthew's a huge nuts.com stan. <laughs> and so I was like, if I could get free nuts.com, like that would be the most incredible present I could give him. And nuts.com, as far as I know, is like a family run company that like I wouldn't mind supporting. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's very, the thing is also what we were talking about before. It's like so many corporations are so bad where it's like, even if they're corporations I like, like, like I eat at Chipotle. Sure. I have a weird relationship with Chipotle. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, Oh, it'd be funny to do an ad for Chipotle. And then it's like, Oh right. They're in the news for like busting unions. So it's like, I don't really yeah. want to do an ad for Chipotle. I'm literally looking up the email of our affinity brands. Oh no. This is going to be so embarrassing. I won't do all of them. Okay, I did say Warby Parker because my glasses are Warby Parker. And they look and, incredible. And guess what? I look fucking incredible. <laughs> oh, I said all clad cookware because they're really expensive and they're really good quality <laughs> cookware. Um, oh, I said the real real because I honestly have many clothes from the real real. Is this interesting? Um, I, I nah. think it's interesting. Okay. Um, on a more general sense, what yeah. would you say is the Stradio Lab brand? <sighs> well, it's young. It's young. It's gay. It's gay. And it is random. <laughs> 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 Which is why nuts.com is in a weird way the perfect. It's sponsor. so young, it's yeah. so gay, it's so random. It's like unexpected, and we could be like, you know, people don't know about it, but nuts.com. Yeah. All right. Okay. Sam, not to be insane, but I did in fact meet your brother the other night through a mutual comedy friend, and he is lovely. I don't think I realized that you had a sibling who was also a performer until a few months ago, despite having been a fan of yours since the dawn of time. Aww. Wow, that's amazing. As someone who could not be more different from their sibling in every way, I am so curious what it's like to share this space with your brother in whatever ways you do overlap. What did this look like for you two when you were growing up? How did you both end up getting into the biz? And do you ever talk about slash bond over comedy stuff? Love this. I love this question. Um, I love both of my siblings, uh, my older sister and my younger brother, but my brother is in comedy. Um, We've sort of like compartmentalized, I think, by having it be sort of different approaches. Like he has more of a a writerly and directorly approach. And I went in more like stand-up-y performery. And I think our overlap is maybe like writing like but he is definitely more like on a film track but i think he's trying to do more stand up and in, in performance cuz he also likes solo performance and is good at it i think it's pretty seamless for the most part and i think it's helpful to like he can ask me about like what do you think i should focus on right now or like who like what is a good use of my time and like i can like one time i was writing a script for i think maybe just to have a sample and i but i have no like training and script writing where he like went to college for film and creative writing and so i like asked sent it to him and was like what is does this make sense like is this mm-hmm. like structurally correct and it was like i think very helpful um we do bond over comedy stuff you know growing up we liked the same things we laughed at the same things and were influenced by a lot of the same things and just made each other laugh a lot which is not that weird yeah <laughs> i mean he it helps that he's just like a genuinely sweet and nice person and like so seamless whenever we've gone out for a drink or something and he's there he's like so seamlessly part of the group it's not like it's sam's brother like yeah yeah i, I yeah he's i he's the best yeah he's a little star he's he's got it all and little he's 29 I- <laughs> yeah but he is uh three foot four <laughs> yeah yeah very little three foot four inches <laughs> <laughs> Um, um, all right. Okay, and George. Oh, there's more? 
George, yes. I don't think your siblings are comedians proper, <laughs> but was comedy an interest you all shared growing up? My brother and I were definitely both interested in performing, but mm. we ended up veering off in completely different directions as people as we got older. TBH, I do think he's a little bit jealous because I've started to pursue comedy as a say it with me 30 year old, and he has yet to make the leap. Interesting. Love that. Um, uh, well, yes, my sisters are incredibly funny, as are my parents. And I'm not saying this is like a fake humble thing, but like when we're all together, I'm not the funniest one by any means. Like my youngest sister is like so almost like almost vaudevillian. Like she does these like impressions of our grandmother that are so spot on or like impressions of my mom or like she she will think of like a gesture that like let's say our mom does that I hadn't even noticed. And then she does it. And it's it's like seeing, you know, whatever, like a really good actor play like a historical figure in a movie where you're like oh they're like nailing the bit or whatever neither of them ever had any uh, intention to to pursue comedy I don't think they're like drawn to writing or performing I think they're just like very funny in conversation and very smart interestingly all three of us had an artistic passion and I'm the only one who pursued it but I don't think that for them it was like that they pursued their second like, I don't think they gave up or something. I think they earnestly, like, cared more about the more serious thing they pursued. So, like, m my middle sister did a lot of visual art. Like, in college, she almost minored in art and had, like, a, a solo show of paintings in, in college at some point and took drawing classes in high school and was considering being an architect. And I think just, like, ended up enjoying engineering and like wanting to go into a, a stable job but it's not like she like stays up at night being like oh god I wish I were a painter I think it's like <laughs> it's not like a, a sad thing and then my youngest sister was like an incredible ballet dancer who would go to like ballet camps where she was the only one that wasn't like homeschooled like all the other ones were like specifically pursuing ballet and my sister literally is now in medical school and so I mean, from what I know about the ballet world, I'm very happy she's not part of it. Like, I, yeah, I saw Black Swan. Yeah, I saw Black Swan. <laughs> she I, cannot go through that. I don't want her to turn into a swan. <laughs> no, that is yeah. so toxic. And she just like loves medicine so much. It's like, I mean, she can't wait to like be a surgeon and, and whatever, and is already thinking about residencies and all this stuff. So, so yeah, I, I'm the only one who pursues something creative. However, it's not that like they're jealous of me or something. They are, in many ways, way happier than <laughs> than I am. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, this is from Wit, who says, How do you two deal with the feeling that you cannot prove yourself to family, peers, or yourself with various projects you each are a part of? Or have you ever felt this? I know it's hard to say I'm doing it for myself, Mauma, <laughs> <laughs> but I really don't ever want to lose focus and try to do something that I think would please others over my own aspirations. Are we chasing a false and intangible satiation? Why do I know not to compare or strive for other success, yet spend every waking moment doing it? Will she, parentheses me, ever be there? <laughs> oh, I love that. Love that. Um, so what was the first question? How do you deal with the feeling that you cannot prove yourself to family, peers, or yourself with the various projects you each are a part of? Oh, interesting. Um, well, I can tell a story that's kind of relevant to this that I think like maybe might be helpful. Um, my parents... Uh, have only ever seen me do stand-up once. It's not because they don't want to. It's because they literally live in a different country. But uh, one time when they were visiting me in Boston, I took them to my home club, the comedy studio, and they saw me do a set. And they didn't have a great reaction to it. Like, I think it was very shocking for them to see me do something that felt so outside the realm of what they expected I would be pursuing. And it's funny because I had kind of planned the whole thing and it was the weekend of my grad school graduation. So I was like, okay, well, they will first see that I did grad school and I also have this as a, like, I, I, I knew that it would be difficult for them, but I, and I wasn't, and I was like, okay, great. So this is the perfect thing. Like they'll first see me excelling academically and then they will see me do this. And even so I could just tell that it was like shocking for them. And I had a really, really negative reaction that I kind of regret. Like I was like, so offended that they weren't like complimentary and I was like yelling at them and it was really like it kind of ruined our weekend to be honest in a way that I don't think was necessary um and I think they respond well to like traditional markers of success so for instance the fact like if we were like written up in a magazine they're like oh I know what that is so I am proud 
And I think once I realized that, I was like, oh, well, then I can separate myself from that and do my own thing. And like every now and then they'll be like, oh, my God, yay. And then they don't have to know that I'm also doing <laughs> shows like in basements. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Um, and it's not. And, and I and I no longer I don't think I like really seek their approval in that way. Yeah. I don't know. Is that helpful? I I don't really think I'm motivated by approval per se. I, I w- the, the the toxic things that I think about are more like um how am I gonna make money and and like will I let's say I have a job that lasts a certain number of months, will I then be able to find a next job? Like those are the things that stress me out more so than uh, will I have the approval of my peers? Yeah, I definitely think about that. Yeah, I don't, cr- I mean, my parents are very sweet and they're very good at saying like, we're proud of you. Mm-hmm. We're like happy that you've done that. But I also think they, I think they were skeptical when I started, but in a way that I was like, yeah, you should be like, totally. <laughs> I wasn't, and I definitely, it wasn't my goal to impress them. Uh, it was always my goal to like, just do it. And it was like, I understand that you're being, and I almost think that was helpful for them because when you're looking for their approval, there's like, well, there's nothing to approve yet. Like you haven't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like you just moved to New York to do open mics. What are you talking about? Yeah. Um, and they were essentially like, as long as you're paying your own rent. Like I was going to say, like, not to open a can of worms, but like, yeah, I, I would never feel comfortable like asking my parents for money so that I could pursue comedy. <laughs> 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 like, yeah. It, it, so, yeah. yeah, I think that would be like... I don't know. There's something about being financially independent where you're like, well, I can do whatever I want. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. But in terms of our peers, though, I do crave. Yeah. I no, crave I do. Peer... No, I do. It's true. It's true. I, I really like I'm very aware of how I react when I think someone is doing bad material or hack material or if they're like uh, pandering or if they're doing clap. Tr- like and I do feel like sometimes if something doesn't land, I'm so aware of the fact that people are watching in the audience. I not to be we're being earnestness. Yes. I had a meeting in a Los Angeles meeting mm. and I was telling them about the show I used to do and because I was like telling them about this idea I had about like a pop star thing and I was like you know I used to do the show and like I was like you know I don't know if like blank you saw it because you were at that other thing and they were like no one's seen that <laughs> in a way because like, I was like I, I I'm think I might bring it back but I'm worried it's like hack and they were like you know no one had, like maybe 200 people saw that show totally, like totally. in the whole world yeah, yeah. And I was like, oh, see, I'm so concerned with did Open Mic Friend 2 exactly. see this? Yeah, yeah. Like, will they think when I post about this on Instagram that I suck now? Mm-hmm. And it's like, why is that? That is a weird thing to care so deeply about. And I am I think it was kind of a wake up. Like, I was like, maybe I do need to break my... I mean, it's helpful to keep in mind, but it's not helpful to tie yourself to. Well, there's a way in which it's all public where, I mean, imagine if you're someone who works in a job and you're, like, making a PowerPoint presentation or something and all your friends and, like, all your friends have seen every PowerPoint you've ever made. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. and you're like, oh, my God, what am I going to do? Fall back on my, like, stop relying on that graphic, mama. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's just, like, that is so unnatural. It, it's, it's unnatural and it, like, only exists in our specific literally only in performance basically because even if you're just a writer then it's just the people that are in the room with you that know what you're pitching you can go and pitch the same exact joke <laughs> like five times in a row in different rooms and no one will know mm-hmm. so yes it is weird and in fact i would like to retract what i said before i do crave my peers approval yeah and i actually need to crave it a little bit less agreed okay next question all we seem to ask famous people is about their diets and skincare routines, but I'd like to know more about your cultural slash media diet. What do you consume that's good and bad for you? How do you keep your comedy brain nourished? What rituals do you want to build? Okay, I just want to say I pitched this as an idea at Gawker that we should do something like Grub Street Diet, but it's about people's media diet. Okay. And then we were like, gonna do it. And then literally another, I can't remember, I think it might be The Verge, but like another website started doing it and I was like pissed. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, media diets. Do you want to go first? Um, sure. I think this year, I'll, I'll say this year, I've been trying to like be more active. I mean, maybe it's a constant pursuit. I don't remember when I started to be try to be more active, but I'm trying to be more active in what I do consume because I, you know, when you're scrolling on your phone yeah. and it's like, okay, I just wasted an hour. Like, if I am on like TikTok for even a half hour, I'm like, okay, jump off a cliff. Yeah. Um, so I I have taken up. I've been reading more, 
which has been helpful because I it does calm and nourish me and it honestly is like I think the older I get the more I return to it where I'm like this actually does make me feel better Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm learning but I also feel like I'm being entertained and I feel like I'm relaxing and it really is something that is nice I like watching TV is hard because there's so much TV and I like am pretentious about it too in a way that I don't necessarily like where I'm like only want to watch the best and it's like I'm trying to drop that you know what though it's good it, it like there's so much garbage like why why watch all the garbage like I'm kind of honestly something we have in common is that we don't watch reality TV and like no offense to people who do but like I kind of like that about us <laughs> <laughs> sorry yeah yeah no there's something to it but I also am starting to get sick of like sometimes I will be like like the prestige stuff yeah yeah I agree I, I I know I've been a little I've been pretty uninspired by TV <laughs> But I am, yeah, I've also been seeing a lot of movies, Mm -hmm. trying to, it's so helpful to be able to go to a movie theater for me. I don't like watching movies at home. I completely agree. Yeah. What what, what would you say your answer is? Um, Well, in terms of like new stuff, I, every morning I try to read the, I read the New York Times um, (laughs) European morning newsletter. Really? (laughs) Yeah, because it's like better at having like world news. I, I found that during the pandemic, the US one was so like focused on specifically COVID news in the US where I was like I understand this is important but like it's not helping me to just like read the numbers every morning and then like five paragraphs about them Mm -hmm. and so that has been kind of a nice just like it's like a nice rundown of just like what's going on in the world and even if sometimes it kind of washes over me i'm like at any given point i like vaguely know what's happening in ukraine and like vaguely know if there's an election in another country and i think it's like i don't know it's just like a nice um not that i have like important opinions about any of these things but it is nice to just like be aware i find that i it makes me feel like more grounded in the world to like have a sense of what's going on and then we subscribe to like the new yorker and new york magazine because my boyfriend works there and those I kind of like dip in and out like there could be like months where I'm like really reading a lot of magazines and then full like six months where I don't open a single one another thing I would like to add is that one thing one specific thing that I can't tell if it's good or bad for me that I am doing right now is playing the uh, like playing video games oh sure and specifically I've been playing like Elden Ring Mm -hmm. which is like very involved and requires like (laughs) you have to like remember you have to like know the map and like remember where to go to get certain items and it's like very expansive and like very time consuming and i do have fun with it but i'm at the same time i'm like that was four hours totally it was that what do i feel better and i uh, cannot tell and i know not everything needs to be for productivity you can have fun right um but i am sort of torn on (laughs) like whether or not that is a even a good way to have fun yeah yeah um Um, i'm trying to think in terms of like movies music like music is honestly something I would like to be better at being intentional about. I don't, I've never been someone who makes playlists. I end up just like whatever comes to mind. I'm like, uh, Heim. And then I'll just like play Heim and like, (laughs) let it, let it play. Or like, I don't know, we got a record player and I thought that would be better for us, but then it's like, okay, well now we have like nine records. (laughs) Like, I guess it's like a lifelong (laughs) battle. Um, and then like movies, I completely agree with you that I have to be in a theater. I mean, I don't have to be in a theater, but it really helps to be in a theater. Like, I thought I would be so much better at watching movies during the pandemic. I subscribe to Criteria and all this stuff, and I never want to watch movies. No. You need a theater. I, Yeah. And then TV, I'm like, I don't know. It's like every now and then I'll get into a show, but I've been rewatching a lot of Curb and 30 Rock. I'm watching Curb, too. Yeah. It's so good. Curb is so good. (laughs) Okay, next question. The question is, George, you have hinted that there are much better Greek isles to visit <laughs> than the popular tourist destinations. Can you give a breakdown? I am badly in need of a vacation. And this is our last email question, actually. Okay, great. Um, wait, You're will you pee? answer this while I go pee? Sure. All right, wow. Well, I'm, I'm alone in the room. I'm alone in the room. <laughs> um, yes, I would say that I am a little out of the loop in terms of what the trendy islands are. I feel like I used to be way more aware of that when I was in high school, but... I really like, when I was in high school, when I was like uh, 18, I really liked going to Kufonisia, um, K-O-U-F-F, no, K-O- <laughs> K-O-U-F-O, K O U F 
O N I S S I. Um, it's like super walkable, and there's a lot of like camping, and it doesn't feel too overrun by tourists. And then I would say that if you look into like the less well-known Cycladic islands, so the the mo- most well-known ones obviously are like Santorini and Mykonos. But if you look at like Folegandros or Amorgos, those are really nice places. Idra and Spetses are really nice islands to go to. And then my family recently has been going to Tinos, which is very up and coming, I hear. Uh, but again, I'm sure I'm missing things. I Whenever people ask me for cool wrecks, like queer wrecks or like re- recommendations in Athens, I, I'm always at a loss because I truly have not lived there since I was 18. And it has undergone many different booms and busts since then. So that would be my answer. Wow, I can't believe there were enough islands to talk about while I went pee. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so those are our email questions. By the way, we say this every time we do this, but we, we can't get to all the questions, but we did read literally every single one of them. Yeah. And and some of them we didn't get to, not because they're bad, but because they like would require too long of an answer, and there's simply no time. But we appreciate every yes, single one of them. Genuinely. Okay. All right. And I will say we have four questions left. Okay. Here's one from Caroline. How do y'all feel about marijuana? And then it's 12 <laughs> question marks. <laughs> <laughs> See, I love our DM questions because they're definitely a more casual energy yeah, yeah. in a way that is like very appropriate. Um, I can start. Sure. I, I, I feel like for literally, I was scared of it and bad at it for like till I was like 27. Mm-hmm. And now I'm like, I think actually maybe I'll even very rarely did it until like the pandemic. And then I was like, okay, I need something else around here. Totally. <laughs> um, And now it's like a, I, it's like such a fun, I love, now I'm like a once a week, an edible on a Sunday mm-hmm. is like the uh, truly the best way to relax. Yeah. Um, I love the stuff. I would honestly love to, I, I have never... I'm just not a big, yeah, I'm not a big weed person. First of all, I think we've maybe even talked about this. I have never been a social weed person or when people are like, I love like smoking weed and running errands. It's like, absolutely not. I feel out of my mind. If I'm going to smoke weed, I have to be at home either alone or with my partner. (laughs) I'm like, lock the door. Lock the door. (laughs) tight. (laughs) Mau, mau. Mau, mau. (laughs) What I do like, my coworker was telling me that she does an edible like, as a sleep aid at night and I do have really bad insomnia and if I could find a way to like do that in a healthy way I would love that like if I could like naturally fall I mean obviously it would not be natural <laughs> if I could artificially fall asleep <laughs> um, every night that would be great but yeah I have been doing it a little bit more during the pandemic um, but it's like maybe once every few weeks uh, and yeah I'm not i have just I'm not a huge weed head but I'm learning and I'm listening yeah I'm seeing value in it. Yeah. All right. Okay. This is such a fun question from Richard. It simply says, are people nicer than they used to be? I love this question so much. And this, again, DM questions, nothing with respect to my emailers. You are so efficient and you really are good at your jobs. Mm -hmm. But the DM people really can cut to the core in this very quick way. Email questions are like shout outs. DM questions are like straight shooters. Yes. Okay. The question is, are people nicer than they used to be? And so this is such a simple question and yet so, so complicated. 100%. Because I actually feel so much more turmoil generally. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Where like, like people are nice. Like the people that like us are nice. Oh, I didn't even think about it in terms of us. I, oh. I, I felt, I, okay. In my mind, this is like a general question about the world, which I like even more. Oh my are God. Are people nicer than they used to be? Hmm. Is that wrong? You're probably right. I guess it, it should be about Well, us. I mean, there's no context. We could It could be either. I kind of like the general one. Better. Me too. But the other one, the one about us is more earnest. I guess that's true. Okay. But, I mean, let's, I'll answer this. Okay. Or, yeah, yeah. I'll answer do, from you me. You do about us. Um, <laughs> I think both of us are, <laughs> we're also receiving critique in a way that is new. Like, just because there's more people listening where it'll be like, there will just be like there's more separation like there it's not like oh i'm friends with someone that's friends with them mm-hmm. it's like oh that's a i don't know these guys at all and i listened to their podcast and like this bothered me or mm-hmm. like and it's sort of like oh weird like it's really hard for me to like shake it when someone says something negative in a way that is 
I'm sure we have more positive than negative, but the negatives stick out so hard. Of course. And so uh, I'm always like, yeah. so I'm like, no, people are meaner than ever before. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Yeah, I mean, and now you talk from a general. I like don't. Yeah, I like don't want to harp on it, but and because ultimately, like, we're very lucky, generally speaking. Of course. But we are both cancers, mm. and like. It comes with some it baggage. It crushes me if someone <laughs> says a single thing that's, like, mean about me. Yeah. And uh, sadly, there's no um, filter where you can just choose nice only. <laughs> yeah, because it is, like, I want you to be able to express yourself. It's just, like, I yeah. just don't really want to know. I know. Yeah, that's the, that. it's true. It is. It's also just, like, an impulse that, like, I've never left a bad Yelp review. Like, it's just a different style of – it's a different, like, type of personality. Totally. Which is totally fine. Um, in terms of people generally being nicer than they used to be, I kind of think people are less nice than they used to be. Yeah. Because I think there's, <laughs> this is going to sound so conservative, but I almost think like uh, there is <laughs> there is less consensus about what good manners are almost. <laughs> totally. Do you know, know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like I there's I almost something where I'm like, sometimes people just act like complete, people that are like, you know, that you s- interact with, like, strangers on the street or at a store or with a barista or whatever. Like, sometimes people act in such an insane way where I'm like, oh, I guess maybe wasps made some points when they decided <laughs> to be, like, emotionally stunted and shut down. <laughs> yeah. But, you know. I have to agree. I think people are less nice. Yeah. All right. Okay. This is another Twitter question. Will you both leave Twitter or stay? Okay. So, uh, what? how do you feel about this? I'm very curious. Um to be honest I mean talk about like we were talking about our media diets before like I've I talk I say this constantly but like it, it really is my one gravest addiction in a way that feels at this point so humiliating so like 2013 but I wish I could quit it and it's like when you talk about playing video games that's literally how I am sometimes with Twitter where it'll I'll just like get sucked in and it doesn't even feel relevant anymore. Like, no, it's it's kind of like a flop platform. Like, the people left there are like, it's like a, you know, it's like Batman's Gotham. <laughs> and you're like in a dark alleyway or something. And yet, for whatever reason, I think because I have met people there, it has been like, I've even gotten professional opportunities there or whatever. There's just something about it that it's almost like a safety blanket or something. It's also just my, and it's hard to tell if this is a chicken or the egg situation, mm-hmm. but like, it's so much easier for my brain to think in that format. Like I yeah. can't go on, like it's so easy to like fire off a tweet and not care. Like I can't fire off an Instagram no. and not care. I can't fire off a TikTok and not care. Like a tweet is so low lift and so like can cut to the yeah. chase of what I'm trying to. It's also just how my brain works. Yeah. Like, yeah, I, I think I naturally think in, little bite-sized thoughts not that that's original but like that is i think w- way more that than like conceptually like some people do who are like make th- like complicated videos or something like i that's just how i think it has always like i remember you know early days when it was mostly jokes like i thought it was so funny and like you know you'd spent like five minutes on it and laugh like three times um but yeah now is bad um, yeah, it's bad. It's hard to give up, though. It's bad, and it's almost like, it's almost like all these people are like in pain. There's also this this thing where people act so um, d- detached in a way where you're like, oh god, like at this point, you're like 35 and have two kids. Like, <laughs> I don't know. Well, gotta move on. You gotta move on, and people are like really, yeah, trying to keep the bits up, and yeah, it's like it's tough. I, you know, people are like making like literally like fake conversation I know, I still know. Yes, and it's like yeah. what are we doing here yeah there is a part of me that almost wishes it would all crash and i would be like freed i'm yeah that's like, kind of how i feel honestly i wonder what my brain would do afterwards yeah but while it is around i will still yeah, probably check I'll it still. and still probably use it unfortunately use it. all right last question oh my gosh this is from dana what do each of you believe to be the straightest art medium and why and then bonus question, which is actually a really good one to end on. What are each of you looking forward to most in 2023? So oh. first, what is the straightest art medium and why? That's a really good question. Yeah. I'm going to say not painting. Not painting. Not even sculpture. Not sculpture. Um, potentially performance art. Interesting. <laughs> so unexpected. Yeah. No, I mean, that's probably not right. I actually have a good one. Okay. 
I think it's like graphic design. Mm. And I understand there are mar- arguments to the contrary, but I feel like a sort of like being like a font nerd and like, <sighs> and, and, and yeah, I, I, I really think font nerd specifically yeah. is, is it? Yeah. I mean, to be honest, it's like <laughs> sometimes, you know, you will go to like, um, Oh God, what's that museum that's like designed? It's like the Cooper, the Cooper Hugh. I can't remember, but you, you go to like, um, like a literal museum exhibition of like design work and you're like, oh yeah, no, this is why painting is better. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, of course I like respect industrial design and graphic design and all this stuff. Industrial design is another thing where people are like, the, the iPod was such a beautiful artifact. And you're like, yeah, it was, but like, I actually would rather look at a painting. <laughs> <laughs> That's my answer. Uh, yeah, no, that's a very good answer. Um, I also want to say that uh, pranks and pranks mm, are art and art. Yep. they are a straight art. Great. All right. Final question. What are each of you looking forward to most in 2023? Wow. The Oscars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I want Kate Blanchett mm. to win. Uh, I don't know. It's like I still have a month. I know. <laughs> I have to I have to do a lot of goals. I have to go to the dentist the next month. And that is a true goal of mine. Do you know what I'm looking forward to? Okay, I don't really tra- like I haven't really traveled other than seeing my parents, which obviously I'm very lucky that my parents live in a very beautiful country and that does count as travel. <laughs> okay. <laughs> However, I'm not someone who like is like I'm going to Japan. I you know, I don't do a lot of big trips like that. And I think that this year I want to do like do a an international trip for pleasure with my boyfriend. Fun. And uh, I kind of want to be the one to plan it, and I want it to be like a fun, you know, a fun thing I do as an adult. I think that's very fun. I, God, what am I looking forward to? Proposing to Misha. <laughs> <laughs> Mom. <laughs> Um, when are you gonna give me grandkids? <laughs> <laughs> no, I um, yeah, I don't know. Wow. Yeah, is that a good answer? Yeah, there's kind of beauty in that. <laughs> I I don't um, I will have goals. Yeah. But part of my thing with goals is never to expect them and more. Yeah. They're things to. Look I know. I was for. trying not to go career. Yeah, and I even mean like like I also have talked about like trying to go abroad next year Mm -hmm. like in like but then i'm like but realistically will i i'm not sure yeah i would like to but wanting to do something and doing it are different yeah so i'm not sure well you're open to possibilities possibilities you're you're going out into the world and you're saying (laughs) i say yes to it all (laughs) yeah I'm looking forward to a new killer season of Drag Race <laughs> this <laughs> spring. Um, I know. I'm. Try- are there cultural things we're looking forward to? I mean, oh, you know what? I'm. Th- again, this is all. I don't know. I. It's kind of. It goes back to my theater thing. Like I've. I kind of have a newfound zest for things that I like didn't do before the pandemic. So I'm like, honestly, this is so embarrassing to admit. Like seeing Tar made me want to like go to the Philharmonic. <laughs> like, I want to do that. I've never done that. Like, I think that would be really fun. Sure. No? No, I mean... Or, yeah. like, something like that. Or, like, I don't know. Like, take advantage of things that are, like, close to us that we wouldn't think to do. I yeah. I feel like that's, that's like, kind of where I'm at right now. I'm, like, excited about, like, reading the uh, goings-on about town section of the New Yorker and being like, well, I'll go to that exhibit. Well, if it's going on about <laughs> well, town. If it's going on about town. That's where I live. Town. <laughs> Yeah. 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 So, yeah. Oh, sure. Yeah. yeah. And you know what else I'm looking forward to? My sister moved to New York uh, in the last couple months, and it's been so nice to have her, and I'm, like, excited about, like, doing things together. And you know what else? I have a final qu- uh, final answer. I'm going to relearn how to drive. Wow. And that is a promise. In 2023, I'm going to take driving lessons. Wow. And re-get my license. Well, you have so many things. Thank you. <laughs> I'm like 2023. Yeah, I'm gonna. Um, damn, I'm gonna commit. To You're gonna a- get that big back tattoo that you've always <laughs> wanted. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm. Well, we're redoing the bedroom. <laughs> um, hmm, 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 hmm. We're gonna figure out the internet. Mm. Yeah. Well, I have to figure out the internet. <laughs> um, no, I'm. I'm looking forward to whatever comes. Love that. Great. Well. Well, thank you all for listening. Yeah. Hope this wasn't boring as hell. And if it was, yeah, that's the point. Yeah. And sorry for all the ads. 
<laughs> <laughs> All right. Happy Thanksgiving. Yeah. We love you. Love you. Bye. Bye. Bye.